15. The time travellers return. So I came back. For a long time I must have been insensible upon the machine. The blinking succession of the days and nights was resumed. The sun got golden again, the sky blue. I breathed with greater freedom. The fluctuating contours of the land ebbed and flowed. The hands spun backwards upon the dials. At last I saw again the dim shadows of houses, the evidences of decadent humanity. These two changed and passed, and others came. Presently, when the million dial was at zero, I slackened speed. I began to recognize our own petty and familiar architecture. The thousand's hand ran back to the starting point. The night and day flapped slower and slower. Then the old walls of the laboratory came around me. Very gently now, I slowed the mechanism down. I saw one thing that seemed odd to me. I think I told you that when I set out before my velocity became very high, Mrs. Watchett had walked across the room, travelling as it seemed to me like a rocket. As I returned, I passed again across that minute when she traversed the laboratory, but now her every motion appeared to be the exact inversion of her previous ones. The door at the lower end opened, and she glided quietly up the laboratory, back foremost, and disappeared behind the door by which she had previously entered. Just before that, I seemed to see Hillier for a moment, but he passed like a flash. Then I stopped the machine and saw about me again the old familiar laboratory, my tools, my appliances, just as I had left them. I got off the thing very shakily, and sat down upon my bench. For several minutes I trembled violently. Then I became calmer. Around me was my old workshop again, exactly as it had been. I might have slept there, and the whole thing had been a dream, and yet not exactly. The thing had started from the south-east corner of the laboratory. It had come to rest again in the northwest against the wall where you saw it. It gives you the exact distance from my little lawn to the pedestal of the White Sphinx, into which the Morlocks had carried my machine. For a time my brain went stagnant. Presently I got up and came through the passage here, limping, because my heel was still painful, and feeling sorely begrimed. I saw the Pall Mall Gazette on the table by the door. I found the date was indeed today and looking at the timepiece saw the hour was almost eight o'clock. I heard your voices and the clatter of plates. I hesitated. I felt so sick and weak. Then I sniffed good wholesome meat and opened the door on you. You know the rest. I washed and dined, and now I am telling you the story.'